In this lesson, we'll cover scope boxes. You may ask yourself, what is a scope box? A scope box is very similar to creating a duplicate view and then cropping that view to only view a small portion of that actual model or floor plan. However, the difference is the scope box can actually control multiple crops in multiple views. So for example, if I take a look at the floor plan that I have on my screen, let's say I only want to see the upper portion of this floor plan. Due to its size, I can't fit the entire thing on a sheet, but I want to create multiple views. So if I create or duplicate views, what will actually happen is those views become segregated or they're linked if I just duplicate them. If I create a dependent, I can create a dependent between those views, but I still have independent crop boxes in each view. So one way to get around that is to use a scope box and then assign each view the rights to that scope box. So that way the scope box governs the crop in as many views as you want. So to see that in action, let's actually start to create different views and then we'll create the scope box for the view. The first thing we'll do is duplicate this view. So I'll right click on this view, go to duplicate view, and I'm gonna choose duplicate as dependent. And what that will do is create a duplicate view called dependent underneath the main view. Now let's go back to the parent view. Now here in the parent view, I'm gonna create a scope box around the area that I wanna crop. The scope box can be found on the view tab in the create section all the way to the right. So go to the view tab on your ribbon, and then click Scope Box to the right of the Create panel. Now the Scope Box works like a lot of other functions in Revit where it's asking you to pick points to define a rectangle around the area you want to make a Scope Box. So I'm just going to start in the lower right, click, and then start to drag my mouse and I'm going to see a dashed line appear around the shape that I want to include inside the Scope Box. And then click on the other side. What you now have are handles allowing you to adjust the view range of the scope box. Now, one thing I would do is actually name this accordingly to the area or the elements you actually want to see. I'm going to call this area A. You could call it whatever you choose, and then I'll apply that. And you would continue to create additional scope boxes. Other things you would want to do is create a match line defining where this is actually breaking at kind of similar to what I have here. Now what I'll do is go to my dependent view. I'm going to double click my dependent view. Right now I see the entire plan. But what I want to do is apply the scope box, which we call area A, to this plan. So in the properties of this plan view, I'll scroll almost all the way to the bottom in the extents area to where I see scope box. And then I'll change none simply by clicking on it, and I see area A for what I chose earlier. Go ahead and select area A, click apply, and now this view is cropped based on that scope box we put back in our plan. Now let's go back to the main view again, level one HVAC duct plan. Right click it, click duplicate view, and again, create a dependent duplicate. This will create another dependent view. And just to show again, I can also set the crop box for this view to area A and apply it. So now if you were to change the crop box on the parent view, it'll also change on the subsequent children view where it's actually used. To illustrate that, let's go back to the level one main view select the scope box, and simply drag the handles on the left halfway across, and then click in the background. Now, let's go to one of our dependent views. And when you go to one of your dependent views, you see the actual scope box has changed the crop for this view. Likewise, for the other view. As a review, what we discussed in this lesson was the scope box. We talked about what is a scope box, Basically, it's a form of a crop within a view, but the difference is the scope box is assigned at the primary view or parent view. 
and actually then can be applied to multiple dependent views, therefore controlling the crop in all of the dependent views by one singular scope box.